Hello students, in today's video we will discuss pharmacology of anti-androgens. Now as we all know androgens are the male sex hormones and testosterone is the principal androgen in men. Now anti-androgens are the drugs uh, that either block the effect of androgens or re reduce androgen levels in the blood. Now look at this uh, classification of anti-androgens. Anti-androgens are broadly classified into three categories. Now first category is the androgen receptor antagonist. Now these agents work by blocking the effect of androgens. Then androgen synthesis inhibitors, these agents inhibit synthesis of androgens. And third category is the antigonadotrophins which reduce androgen levels in the blood. Now let's uh, first see to the uh, first category that is the androgen receptor antagonist. These are of two types, steroidal and uh, non-steroidal agents. Now steroidal agents include uh, for example ciproterone acetate, magastrol acetate, chlormadinone acetate, spironolactone, oxandolone whereas the non-steroidal androgen receptor antagonist include flutamide, bicalutamide, nilutamide, topilutamide and zelutamide, apalutamide. Now uh, very important to note that uh, non-steroidal androgen receptor antagonists have largely replaced steroidal androgen receptor antagonists as these non-steroidal agents they show higher selectivity for androgen receptors and therefore they exhibit better side effect profile. Now second category of uh, anti-androgens are androgen synthesis inhibitors. Now as we all know androgens are steroids synthesized from cholesterol. So these agents inhibit enzymes required for the synthesis of cholesterol. Now first type of uh, androgen synthesis inhibitors are CYP17A1 inhibitors for example ketoconazole, then abiraterone acetate, then second type are CYP11A1 inhibitors for example aminoglutithimide. Then third type of androgen synthesis inhibitor are 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. Now these agents inhibit conversion of testosterone to a more active biometabolite of testosterone that is dihydrotestosterone. So these agents inhibit synthesis of dihydrotestosterone. For example, finasteride, dutasteride, uh, then apristeride, then alpha tradiol. Third category of anti-androgens are antigonadotrophins and uh, these drugs reduce the level of androgens in the blood. Now these are of three types, gonadotropin releasing hormone modulators, then progesterogens and astrogens. Now gonadotropin releasing hormone modulators are of two types, gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist, for example luproreline. Then gonadotropin releasing hormone antagonist, for example, cetrorelix. Then uh, second type of antigonadotropins are progesterogens, for example, allyl astrenol, then chlormadinone acetate. And the third type of antigonadotropins are astrogens, for example, astrodiol, ethyl astrodiol, diethyl uh, still be astrol. Now the first category of uh, anti-androgens are androgen receptor antagonist. Now androgen receptor antagonist act by binding to the androgen receptors. Now these drugs competitively displace androgens like testosterone and dihydrotestosterone from androgen receptors thereby preventing androgens to produce their pharmacological actions. Now, these androgen receptor antagonists are of two types, steroidal androgen receptor antagonist and non-steroidal androgen receptor antagonist. Now let's first talk about uh, steroidal uh, androgen receptor antagonist, for example, ciproterone acetate. Now these drugs are structurally related to steroidal hormones and uh, since these are uh, steroids, most of the steroidal androgen receptor antagonists do not specifically bind to androgen receptors. On the contrary, they can also bind to other receptors. And thus, uh, they exert 
ऑफ टारगेट हॉर्मोनल एक्टिविटी सच एज प्रोजेस्टरोजेनिक एक्टिविटी देन ग्लूकोकॉटिकॉइड एक्टिविटी अलॉन्ग विद एंटी एंड्रोजन एक्टिविटी now these steroidal androgen receptor antagonist are also weak partial agonist of androgen receptors in the absence of potent androgens like testosterone and dihydrotestosterone so many a times they cause increase in the androgenic effect and thus because of these drawbacks steroidal androgenic receptor antagonist have been largely replaced by non steroidal androgen receptor antagonist now a uh, second type of uh, androgen receptor antagonists are non steroidal androgen receptor antagonists for example by calutamide flutamide now these are structurally distinct or different from steroid that is their structure is not like steroids now non uh, steroidal androgen receptor antagonist show selectivity for androgen receptors that means they bind selectively to androgen receptors and thus these are described as pure anti androgens now apart from this uh, they do not exhibit a uh, partial agonistic activity and thus they do not activate androgen receptors and therefore they are termed as silent antagonist now because of uh, their better pharmacological profile non steroidal androgen receptor antagonist have largely replaced steroidal androgen receptor antagonist now further talking about uh, non steroidal uh, androgen receptor antagonist now these drugs are the component of uh, uh, cap therapy therapy that is combined androgen blockage therapy for the treatment of metastatic carcinoma of prostate now in which two different category of uh, anti androgens are used for potent anti androgenic effect now as we all know uh, that uh, uh, dihydrotestosterone acts as a gro growth factor in the prostate gland and dihydrotestosterone stimulates uh, tissue growth in the prostate gland causing metastatic prostatic cancer so most commonly employed method for the treatment of prostate cancer is to deprive prostate cancer of androgens that is to deprive uh, prostate gland of testosterone as well as dihydrotestosterone so this therapy that is a combined androgen blockage therapy it consists of gonadotropin releasing hormone modulators along with along with non steroidal androgen uh, androgen uh, receptor antagonist like uh, by calutamide uh, and uh, this cap therapy that is a combined androgen uh, blockage therapy is highly effective in the treatment of prostate cancer so by calutamide is used along with gonadotropin releasing hormone modulators for the treatment of metastatic carcinoma of prostate now liver damage caused by flutamide has restricted the use of flutamide then bicalutamide causes side effects like uh, hot flashes chills uh, edema and loose stools now if uh, hepatic transaminase enzyme rises twice above normal therapy with bicalutamide should be stopped now second category of anti androgens are androgen synthesis inhibitors now these agents reduce synthesis of androgens that is steroidal hormones uh, that is they inhibit synthesis of testosterone and dihydrotestosterone now very important we should know that testosterone is a steroidal hormone and it is synthesized from cholesterol now first type of uh, uh, androgen synthesis inhibitors are cyp11a1 inhibitors for example ketoconazole now these drugs inhibit steroidogenesis that is these drugs inhibit synthesis of steroids uh, they inhibit synthesis of steroidal hormone that is testosterone by inhibiting cyp11a1 enzyme that converts cholesterol to pregnenolone and further there is inhibition of synthesis of 
testosterone. Now, ketoconazole is not used because of its high toxicity. Now, a second type of androgen synthesis inhibitors are CYP17A1 inhibitors and uh, these drugs prevent uh, further conversion of pregnant steroid into androgens and these drugs also inhibit synthesis of uh, glucocorticoids. Now, third type of androgen synthesis inhibitors are 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, for example, uh, finasteride. Now, as we all know that uh, testosterone is produced in the testes. Now, this testosterone is converted to its more potent androgenic metabolite that is uh, dihydrotestosterone in the organs like uh, prostate gland hair follicle by the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. So, these drugs are the competitive inhibitor of the enzyme 5-alpha reductase and these drugs reduce circulating uh, as well as uh, prostatic concentration of dihydrotestosterone that is they also reduce concentration of dihydrotestosterone in the prostate gland. Now, as already discussed, dihydrotestosterone stimulates the growth of prostate gland uh, therefore 5-alpha reductase inhibitors decrease size, uh, prostatic size in benign hypertrophy of, of prostate. So, these drugs, uh, they are used in the management of, in the treatment of benign hypertrophy of prostate. They are used in the treatment of enlarged uh, prostate gland. Apart from this, uh, increased dihydrotestosterone is also responsible for male pattern baldness. So, these drugs are indicated in treating male pattern baldness as these drugs promote hair growth and also prevent further loss of hair. They are also useful in treating hirsutism that is excessive hair growth in the woman. And uh, finasteride is effective orally, half-life is 4 to 8 hours and in elderly the half-life is 6 to 15 hours. It is well tolerated and side effects include uh, decreased libido, impotence, uh, gynecomastia and skin rashes are rare. Now, uh, the third category of anti-androgens are anti-gonadotropins. Now, these anti-gonadotropins reduce uh, levels of androgen. They reduce level of testosterone in the blood. Now, first type of anti-gonadotropins are gonadotropin-releasing hormone modulators. Uh, now, these drugs, they interrupt synthesis of testosterone. Now, uh, the first Type of gonadotropin releasing hormone modulators are the gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist, for example, uproreleen. Now, look at this diagram. Uh, this figure shows hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis in men. Now, hypothalamus produces gonadotropin releasing hormone. Now, this gonadotropin releasing hormone stimulates anterior pituitary to produce gonadotropins. One of the gonadotropins is luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone stimulates leading cells of the testes to produce testosterone. So, this is how uh, stimulation of the release of uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone stimulates the secretion of testosterone. Now, gonadotropin releasing hormone agonist. They stimulate release of gonadotropin releasing hormone. Now, stimulation in the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone persistently stimulates anterior pituitary. And because of the persistent stimulation of uh, anterior pituitary, there is increase in the level of testosterone that is spike uh, of testosterone level for, for uh, first one to two weeks. And this is called as a surge. But when these drugs are administered for a longer period of time, this persistent stimulation of pituitary causes down regulation of pituitary receptors. That means even though there is excessive production of gonadotropin releasing hormone, these, uh, this anterior pituitary is not stimulated. And this causes marked inhibition of the uh, secretion of luteinizing hormone, which further causes fall in the level of testosterone. So, this is how gonadotropin releasing hormone uh, agonist produce fall in the levels of testosterone in the blood. Now, uh, the second type of uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone modulators are gonadotropin releasing hormone antagonist, for example, cetrorelics. 
Now, these drugs block uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone receptors in anterior pituitary. Now, because of the blockage of receptors, there is reduced production of LH, luteinizing hormone, and that causes fall in the level of testosterone. So, this is how uh, these drugs interrupt uh, the testosterone synthesis. But these uh, drugs are associated with the greater risk of uh, anaphylactic reaction and they also show severe side effects. Now, second type of antigonadotropins are uh, progestogens like uh, megastrol acetate, astrogens like uh, dithylstilbiastrol. This figure we have already discussed. Now, uh, progesterogens and astrogens, uh, they inhibit anterior pituitary. They inhibit anterior pituitary to release luteinizing hormone. And uh, since there is reduced synthesis of luteinizing hormone, there is reduced synthesis of testosterone. So this is how antigonadotropins inhibit the levels of androgen in the blood. Now let's talk about the side effects of antiandrogens. Now before that, it's very important to remember that androgen is the uh, that uh, testosterone is the main androgen in body and testosterone in the body is converted to its uh, two bioactive metabolites uh, namely dihydrotestosterone and astradiol. So uh, anti-androgens they reduce the levels of testosterone, dihydrotestosterone and astradiol in the blood and this reduced availability of these androgens in the blood is responsible for the common side effects. Now the common side effects that are observed in men are breast tenderness, uh, then breast enlargement, uh, feminization, hot flashes, uh, sexual dysfunction, infertility and osteoporosis. Now in women antiandrogens are better tolerated but uh, antiandrogens reduce estrogen level. Now uh, general uses of antiandrogens uh, uses of antiandrogens in men. Now, as we all know that uh, dihydrotestosterone is a major factor responsible for the excessive growth of uh, prostate gland that first causes benign prostate hyperplasia and further uh, which can cause prostatic cancer. So, antiandrogens are useful in the treatment of benign prostate hyperplasia as well as prostate cancer. Then, uh, antiandrogens are also useful in overly high sex drive. Uh, management of early puberty and in women they are useful in the treatment of acne uh, then treatment of seborrhea that is excessive uh, production of sebum by the sebaceous gland uh, and they are also useful in the management of excessive hair growth then uh, since uh, the androgens they can uh, they cause uh, male pattern baldness uh, they can cause hair loss in women uh, Anti-androgens are also useful in the management of uh, scalp hair loss and apart from this it is anti-androgens are useful in, uh, in the treatment of polycystic ovary syndrome. So this is in brief on pharmacology of androgens. Uh, please note that the information provided in this video is meant only for academic educational purpose exclusively for students from their examination point of view and for treatment kindly consult your physician if you find the video useful kindly like subscribe and share this video thanks for watching this video